I'm Tony Clark at CNN Center. NASA is just about two and a half minutes away from launching the uh, shuttle Columbia. Here is a live shot of the uh, top of one of the external tanks of the shuttle Columbia. This has uh, been a smooth countdown so far. You can see two minutes and nine seconds now before the launch. It uh, has gone very smoothly, unlike uh, the previous launch attempt. This, was, this mission was originally planned for a launch back in February, around February 25th, a broken hydraulic line forced a postponement then. And then on March 22nd, it got down to T minus three seconds. That's when a piece of debris jammed a valve and shut down the shuttle's engines just as they started to fire. The mission was planned again for two days ago, but there was a, a problem then again problem with one of the navigational units, a power supply to one of the inertial maneuvering uh, measurement units, rather, one of the, uh, the shuttle's three navigational systems, which forced the 48-hour uh, postponement. But now everything is going smoothly. There was some concern earlier today about clouds in the area. You can see the clouds there, but those are not considered to uh, be a problem. They're down to just a little bit over one minute before launch. This is planned as a nine, perhaps 10-day mission. It is sponsored by the German government. Germany is paying $560 million for this Space Lab flight. And uh, the delays cost an additional $10 million. Let's listen in as the countdown clock ticks out that last minute. In another 15 seconds, we'll, look, we'll get the command for auto sequence start. We have a go for auto sequence start. The baton has been passed from the Launch Control Center computers, and Columbia is now in charge of its own launch countdown. T minus 20 seconds. Columbia's vent doors are being moved and configured for flight. T minus 15, coming up on a go for main engine start. 12, 11, 10, T minus 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Solid rocket ignition and liftoff, liftoff of Columbia on a voyage to the future. Roll, roll, roll. Roger roll, Columbia. Houston is now controlling the roll, roll maneuver underway and complete. Columbia is in a head down position on course for a 28 and a half degree flight, 160 nautical mile orbit. Board Columbia now beginning to throttle down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle in the lower regions of the atmosphere. Columbia is now just one nautical mile downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 17,000 feet. Accelerating now through 680 miles per hour. Engines are now beginning to throttle back up. Columbia, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. All three engines are back at full throttle. Hydraulic systems and electrical systems performing well aboard, a, aboard uh, Columbia. Altitude 64,000 feet, range from the launch site 8 nautical miles. Columbia is now traveling 1,700 miles per hour. The next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. That comes at about two minutes and four seconds. There you see the two solid uh, rocket boosters SRB being separated as the shuttle Columbia makes Columbia its way towards a planned orbit uh, 160 nautical, nautical miles, miles up. It is, as I say, a planned uh, nine, perhaps stretched to ten day mission. The seven member crew will divide up into two teams to uh, work round the clock in the Space Lab module, a module built by the Europeans 
for about a billion dollars. The experiments, there are some 88 experiments on board, most of which will deal with the effects of weightlessness or microgravity on a variety of materials, animals, plants, and in particular on astronauts themselves. There are two German physicists on board. Germany is not only paying for the flight, but has uh, come up with most of the experiments for this flight. Scheduled landing uh, early in May on uh, the uh, Cape, Cape Kennedy. The, uh, the Kennedy Space Center, that is. There you can see those three main engines going. There are seven crew members on board. Steve Nagel is the commander of this. Interestingly, Steve Nagel was the pilot on Germany's first space lab mission, designated D-1. That was back in 1985. Germany then planned to have a second space lab mission in 1988, but uh, that mission was postponed because of the Challenger accident. Jerry Ross is also on board. He is the payload specialist. This is his fourth flight. Bernard Harris, who was one of the, uh, the class members, the astronaut class members, first astronaut class after the Challenger. This is his first flight. And there are two German physicists on board. As I say, Germany is eager to get this flight underway. They have a lot of experiments. They will be controlling the experiments from their space center outside Munich. And of course, throughout the next nine to 10 days, we will be bringing you up to date on the latest of this German space lab mission.